Charlie. Let's talk about puppies being bratty because if you have a puppy, it's going to be bratty. It is. And you'll, you'll see that the puppy gets better in some respects on some things. In other words, like Charlie, we have him sitting before I open the door, right? And then that way the dog starts learning that he has to sit to get the door open, right? Remember, the door is a point of positive reinforcement. But the, they'll be bratty. Let me give you an example. I'll give you an example of like last night. Last night was rough. We, we drove to my house, but before we drove to my house, I had to go pick up Jupy. I had to do some errands. I had to get some puppy food. So we were in the car for a total of about five hours, four and a half hours, something like that. It was a long time. And Charlie did great. Charlie just slept the whole time, which was awesome. We didn't have to stop and, and let him out. It was great. But as, as a, he was sleeping, I was like, ah, oh, shit, you know, the car, you know, he doesn't get car sick at all, which is awesome. Get the puppy in the car right away. Don't feed him a lot. And that, you know, it'll go much easier. But so Charlie slept the whole way. So by the time we got to the, to my house, Charlie had all this energy. So last night, even though that dogs, animals respond to the circadian rhythm, dogs are primarily a nocturnal animal anyway. But the domestic dogs, they sort of like get into a rhythm of being up during the day with the humans. So he was sleeping during the day because of the vibration of the car just kind of Charlie you got to keep pulling stuff out of their mouth when they're real young like this that's just how it is get off me char um, but so he had all this energy so last night you know I found I found by him by driving up that he can hold it for five hours you know in the right circumstances he can hold it for five hours which is better than the first time we drove to my house where I think I had to let him out twice. So he's getting, you know, this sleep is helping the puppy grow and everything and his bladder and everything. Everything's growing and he's, he's getting better at it. But he had so much energy. He woke me up three times last night. And when in doubt, I'm getting up. I'm taking the puppy out. I don't want the puppy to start going to the bathroom in the crate because that'll screw up crate training process. You know, the crate training process because that's how you're training them with the denning instinct that the dog doesn't want to go to the bathroom in the crate so you keep the clean absolutely spotless right so he woke me up a bunch of times I knew it was sort of gonna happen but you know it's like you hear this bratty kind of you know I want out I want out I want something out no and you just gonna you just have to sort of deal with it and know that it sort of gets better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like they're, they're bratty and they don't have much, but they know that they can bark and that can get the human to respond. But the important thing is like, don't really respond and give them something, right? If they're barking. Now last night is a different situation because he was barking because he had all this energy. Each time I took him out, he did go to the bathroom. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like, Charlie, if I go in the kitchen, the, he's sort of stays in this like room that has a wood burning stove in it. I guess it'd be a living room if it was a normal house. So, so he's in there and he's been making noise, but then it sort of is sorting, starting to subside and it's subsiding because I'm saying no, I'm going back in when he starts this barking because he thinks that I'm going outside. He wants to go outside. But being bratty is not going to get you outside. So I'll just take a dog outside through the kitchen. If he's barking, I let him bark. And there was an element of this like last night, like he's being bratty. He just wants to go out. He did go to the bathroom, but I didn't just run down there, you know. I'm going to let Charlie out. I try and wait until there's a lull and then I go down there and get Charlie out. So don't always give, don't give, don't give the puppy anything if they're, they're barking at you, telling you that they want something. Charlie will eat when I feed him and say in the morning, he's barking. I know he want, I know he's barking. Puppies will bark because they're hungry. 
And I know that that's why he's barking, but I have other things to do. I have to get the other dogs out. Everybody needs to go out. Charlie has to wait. And I know that by having Charlie, what, he's got my hat. He's, by Charlie waiting, you know, it's fine. You need, you need the dog to learn that it needs to wait. It needs to wait its turn. And it's a slow, it's a slow process at first. We won't see Charlie sort of bumping up into compliancy until around four months. So it's sort of, it's sort of hell for a while because we're not really giving him any heavy pressure. I do tell Charlie no at this point, but he's still not getting any, any pressure. We're kind of building him up to having pressure, meaning leash corrections and stuff. By the way, look at the collar I have on Charlie. See how fat this is? He had a, <laughs> he had a leather collar on, but watch the leather collar still work at first, but then when they start stretching, take that collar off and put on something real wide like this. See, I, see, this is very wide. And the reason why is you don't want the dog to have pressure on their trachea because if they start going, <clears throat> then you, you know, it's going to get worse as the dog lunges forward and puppies like this, Tonka, you know, they lunge forward. It's, they're not going to be at heel. You're just trying to like ride the puppy wave, you know? So they'll, they'll lunge out, they're not gonna stay at heel, and they're gonna choke themselves. So you flip, you, if you have a leather collar on, and it starts stretching, it's gonna get thinner, put on something like this. This is a kind of hard plastic collar, and you, if you use something like this, you're not gonna get that choking effect because it takes a big wide area on the dog's neck, so it's not putting pressure in a small area. I hope that makes sense. With puppies, use a really wide collar. Leather works pretty good, but if the leather starts stretching, it's gonna get thinner. So switch it in. If you can just start off by using a wider plastic collar, that's probably your best bet. Don't buy those nylon collars. Those are the worst, the little puppy collars. That'll make your dog choke or make that choking sound. And don't, don't use harnesses. Harnesses are just going to tell the puppy that, you know, it can do whatever. And that's not the message that you want to let, not want to do. If a dog trainer, a positive reinforcement trainer told you to use a harness because the puppy will start choking, don't listen to him. Get a big fat wide collar like this. Charlie's having no issues with this. He hasn't. Now, as far as like housebreaking goes, Charlie is pretty much housebroken because I, you know, I, you know, this is a job for me. So I'll wake up in the middle of the night. He's about as housebroken at this point as my, my English, or my, um, my English cockers, my German short hair was, Tonka was pretty much housebroken by 13 weeks, like real good. You know, Charlie's about at the same level. Charlie's, uh, will be 12 weeks next week and you know there really aren't any accidents and if Charlie would have an accident it would be kind of my mistake either I fed him at the wrong time do you understand what I'm saying like I can only think of two accidents he's had that's it and that's very good so by the time he's 13 weeks he's gonna be pretty it's gonna be much easier also, what I wanted to say is, good, sit. As the dog gets older, you'll get the opportunity to sleep in later, and I can't wait. And seeing Charlie being able to hold it last night, or as we were driving up for five hours, is a good indication that his body, you know, he's growing, he's, he's learning to hold it, and it is a lot of muscle memory. And th that is what I want to say, is you sort of want to push the dog with housebreaking. Like if, if, if you feed the dog and you know that you can, about 20 minutes or a half an hour, the dog will hold it in the crate. That's what you wanna do. And then you wanna have the dog hold it for 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Do you understand? You start building the dog up and making the dog sort of, you know, use those muscles, you know, use everything you know, that an that a older dog would use to, to hold it. So you just sort of build the dog up to 
house breaking, crate training, you build the dog up to pressure when we're going to start pressure training the dog. Like in a very small period of time, three weeks, we do the preliminary work with the puppy, right? And then at a point we'll start pressure training the dog and he'll just sort of jump up real fast. So you don't, don't worry about it yet. You know, the time will come when we'll start using pressure with Charlie and he's going to jump up real quick. At this point, we just are just making him get used to the things that he's going to, he's going to do in the future, right? Like, like, like hold this, put this in his mouth, hold, drop and say those words very short periods. He doesn't have to do it long. He just has to start learning to do it. Now, just because he's, he's, he's doing this holding out, hold, drop. That doesn't mean that he's not, we're not going to teach him force, hold, force, fetch. He has to go through that too. This is just puppy training, but it's training. It's training never, nevertheless. So we'll just, we'll just go hold, good, hold, drop and then take it out of his mouth. Get him used to seeing this object, get him habituated to this object. You know, like when I'm taking him uh, out the door, I'm, I'm making him sit so that he sees that early on as like he has to sit to get outside. And that's something that we'll do with all the dogs is they need to sit before you open the door. Your dog should be calm. Charlie, you wanna go play? Here, get down there. You're, oh, he's going to grab my hat. Your dog should be calm as it's going through the door. And the reason why it should be calm going through the door is that, hi, Charlie, is that the door is a point of positive reinforcement. And if your dog is going through the door excited, you're conditioning the dog to be excited. And a, a bird dog, they're all, you know, they're easy to excite. So it really is this process of getting the dog calmer, you know, because they're a, bu they're, they're a bundle of energy. They really are, but it does. It gets better over time. You have to watch them. You have to constantly take stuff out of their mouths. It's work. It's work. Don't get a dog unless you're willing to work with the dog. I mean, you can accomplish a lot by passing the dog off to a dog trainer. It's a great way to do it. It really is. But when the dog comes back, you still have to work with the dog. But this gives you the opportunity to make it easier on you to work with the dog, the commands are conditioned in. No will be conditioned in with this dog. No is the word that we use to tell the dog that it's in the improper position or it's doing something wrong. Stop what you're doing, dog. You're doing it wrong. That's why this whole positive reinforcement training is just a, is just a joke. We have four million dogs dying every year and we have an army of these people telling people that this is the proper humane way to train the dog. It's not. You have to you have to teach your dog no. Charlie has to learn no. All dogs need to learn no. And it's unrealistic to think that your dog is gonna function not ever, you know, you not ever say no or being giving the dog a negative. These people, they won't even work with aggressive dogs. They won't, they have size limitations on dogs. It's, they love working with puppies, which really stinks. The kindergarten training class, if anybody's advertising that, that's a sure sign that you want to stay away from it. They want to give your dog hot dogs. Hot dogs aren't, you know, I eat them because I like them, but they're not healthy. They're not healthy for a human. And with your dog, you, you know, they, they don't have free will. They don't. He can't. He can't go down and buy hot dogs. You have the choice of making the decision. I'm not going to feed my dog crap. I'm going to feed my dog something healthy. And you also have the choice of not training your dog with food. There's no re why. Why would you do that? Why do people do this? Because it's easy. Your dog doesn't. You know they don't need food to function. They don't. You don't have to train your dog, sit, here's some food, sit, here's some food, sit, here's some... Just tell the dog it's doing a good good thing. They want to work for the human. That's the problem is that nowadays, like, people have all these dogs in the last hundred years. Dogs have become, you know, house pets and they, they don't work. They just sit around and do nothing. Of course, four million are dying. You know, they're all... Four million are dying because of no training, improper training, you, you know? 
it's it's ridiculous so train your dog just don't use food just use praise use toys in other words the dog this will be conditioned something that the dog likes and the dog will interact with the human with something like this you see what i'm saying charlie charlie's eating grass hang on charlie charlie here charlie here good boy so um anyway this is about 15 minutes long i'm just babbling about puppies but it, it really is it gets better they're bratty just don't get sucked into the brattiness. Whether you're tired or not, just sort of remain calm. Just know that there is, end, there is an end in sight. The dog will get up to speed. You know, if you have a puppy and you decided to make this decision to, to uh, you know, influence the puppy real young, you're smart. Whether you're doing it or you're paying somebody like me to do it, you're smart. That is the best way to do it. If, if I get a dog, if I go, if I'm gonna buy a dog, like a pedigree, I'm going to get it when it's young. I want the dog to be influenced real young. I'm not saying that you can't go to the shelter if you just want a house dog. You, you can get a two-year-old dog. You can get a five-year-old dog. You can get a six-year-old dog and train it. All dogs are trainable. This notion that the, uh, you know, you can't train an old dog new tricks. It's bullshit. It is, man. I've, I trained a eight-year-old Weimaraner to pick up a cane and pick up keys. You know, you can, you can, I've trained many older dogs to do retrieving. It might take a little bit longer, but they can learn it. They can. They can all sort of learn this. Charlie, you're cute. Come here, you little freak. Look at this guy. He's like a little monkey. It's like a monkey. Look at his tail. Look at him. He's a spaz. He's a monkey. Look at him. That is a cute dog. Kane, I hate Trump. He's going to jail, Kane. Charlie likes to talk about Trump a lot. You know, I sort of agree with him about Trump. I, I think that that hearing or reading the thing in The Guardian the other day, it's it's obvious that other, you know, GCHQ, they knew that shit was going on. The Dutch knew. Um, you know, people in Poland knew that, that, that Trump, Trump's people were meeting Russian spies. I think he's going to jail. Oh, Charlie has something, has something else to say. He's a, I just wanted to say I think he's a fucking dick and I'm going to move to Canada. I'm going to Canada. They got free health care up there. I get free veterinary care. That's why I'm going to Canada. That's where my dad lives, Canada. Charlie. Oh, good. Good pee pee. Good boy. You're a good dog, dude. Charlie, come here. Charlie, up. Up. Sit. Hold. Good. Drop. That's good. Here. That's good. Charlie, you're a maniac. Charlie. Charlie, up. Sit. Hold. Whoop. Do it again. Charlie. Charlie, up. Sit. Hold. Drop. No, drop, you little gator. Sit. Sit. Here. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, fucking Charlie. Charlie, up. Sit. That's good, brother. Sit. Good boy. Ah, no, not with the teeth, dude. Come here. Up. Sit. That's pretty good, dude. You're getting it. You're cute. Sit. No. Sit. No. Here. Charlie. Charlie, up. No, up. That's good. Sit. Here. One more time, Char. Charlie, up. Sit. Good. Hold. Good. Drop. That's it. The session with Charlie. Lasted about a minute. We just wanted him to get up. See how he's biting at my pants? He's a puppy. Try and limit it. But we got him to do it, which is just get up on the platform and sit. We're getting him used to getting on the platform and sitting. This, this platform, or maybe not this one, but it might be something else, is going to be used to teach the dog to spin into heel, 
we use it for a lot of things, so we sort of combine stuff. So he's learning to get up on the target, and he's learning to sit. We'll start tightening everything up as we go. We don't care if he's sitting in the appropriate position. We just worry at first about him sitting in his ass on the ground. Doesn't really, it's not really that important how long he's sitting, but if he's sitting, we're gonna release him before he, he sits up. And that's very important. Sit, good, sit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's better to not correct the dog right now it's better just to let the their body start functioning it's a lot of muscle memory and let's have charlie do it one more time because he's awesome he is awesome hell i rate this dog my this dog gets my highest rating of super fun charlie charlie up sit good now i see he's sitting the right way and everything sit hold drop no drop you little gator Oh look, he's an alligator. He's a he's a melanois. Here, up. Do it again, dude. That's awesome. Charlie, up. No, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Sit. Sit. Good. Hold. Hold. Drop. Drop. President? It's bullshit.